Hi, my name is Francois, and I am the engineering director for Android Media. Hi, I'm Karthik, the product manager for Android Media. In this talk, we'll discuss two main topics, premium media experiences like spatial audio and HDR on Android devices, and the latest Jetpack Media 3 release, which helps developers build these premium experiences. Let's start things off by introducing some of the new premium media experiences. Spatial audio is one of the premium Android features we launched in Android 13. It creates a more immersive listening experience by placing sound around you in a virtual space so you feel like you're in the middle of the action. We started by adding support for movie and TV content in Android 13 and plan to bring in more use cases, including music, in the future. Device implementations have to be carefully tuned to ensure the spatial audio experience is more engaging and preferred compared to the traditional stereo experience. This requires a spatializer to render an immersive experience while respecting the creator's intent, head tracking support with low latency between the mobile device and headset, and flexible APIs for developers to detect capabilities and control the spatial audio experience. Android is committed to delivering a high-quality spatial audio experience to our users. We have been working closely with our ecosystem partners to ensure the technology integrates well, and in particular, the platform can support important formats, both current and future. The Bluetooth and audio stacks are optimized, and the spatializer is tuned correctly, and users can have access to the premium content they love. You can experience this quality on Netflix. By working closely on spatializer tuning and head tracking latency, we have ensured users can enjoy immersive content that meets Netflix standards. Check out our developer site to learn more on how to implement spatial audio in your app. If you're using a recent version of ExoPlayer, all you have to do is start streaming multi-channel audio. Another audio feature that helps enable a high-quality music listening experience is lossless audio. Lossless audio refers to audio that has been compressed with little to no loss in quality. This is becoming increasingly popular with content providers. So in Android 14, we are adding better support for playback of lossless and high-res audio formats over wired USB headsets. Delivering pristine quality audio over USB can be a challenge. For example, the audio framework may narrow down the bit depth or perform resampling, which can introduce distortions and reduce audio quality. The audio framework also lacks standard APIs to support lossless formats like MQA or DST. To get around this lack of support, you have to directly control the USB device and bypass the audio framework. This, in turn, creates more challenges like security issues, needing additional user permissions, and the inability to play ringtones or alarms over USB. To address these problems, we have added a few new APIs in Android 14, starting with the Audio Mixer Attributes class. This class represents the format in which the audio mixer should output audio and the behavior it will use to mix audio data. You can pick between two mixer behaviors, default, meaning that the platform will behave as normal and mix audio from different sources. And bit perfect, meaning the audio data will be sent directly without any additional processing. You can use this new bit perfect behavior to stream high quality audio, such as DSD over PCM on Android. The Audio Manager API has also been updated to better support these use cases. With get supported mixer attributes, you can query a connected USB device for its supported mixer attributes. With add-on preferred mixer attributes changed listener, you can attach a listener to react to changes in the preferred mixer attributes. And with set preferred mixer attributes, you can configure specific mixer attributes for the audio manager to use. Note that for lossless playback, your audio format object must match what you set with set preferred mixer attributes. Moving on to premium video experiences, HDR technology provides a more realistic and delightful viewing experience by enabling more vibrant colors and greater range of brightness. HDR is becoming increasingly popular. Many premium Android devices support HDR technology for rendering and capture. 
In the Android 13 release, we standardize support for HDR video. And in Android 14, we are bringing HDR support to images. We are excited to announce Ultra HDR, a new technology to enable HDR images on Android. With Ultra HDR, users can capture, view, edit, and share their photos in HDR quality on supported devices. One of the biggest challenges with introducing new formats is the potential for app compat issues. Ultra HDR is fully backward compatible with JPEG. This means that images rendered as standard JPEG images in SDR on devices and apps that do not support Ultra HDR. It is important to note that HDR photo capture available on cameras today is different from Ultra HDR feature coming in Android 14. HDR, in the context of cameras, typically refers to some sort of exposure bracketing to capture a high dynamic scene. The captured image is then mapped to an 8-bit standard dynamic range for saving to a file. This means the image is only rendered in standard dynamic range when being viewed. In Android 14, the Ultra HDR feature enables the captured image to be saved in its original 10-bit high dynamic range. So when the file is viewed, it can be rendered in HDR quality on HDR screens. Since many premium Android devices already have HDR screens, you can deliver these visual quality improvements to your users as soon as Android 14 rolls out. Ultra HDR includes a 8-bit SDR JPEG and extends it with a gain map layer to update the image to HDR. This means the image still be rendered in 8-bit SDR on SDR screens or when the viewing conditions are more appropriate for SDR. The device camera and decode pipeline must be enhanced for 10-bit capture and HDR rendering. We are working closely with our Android OEM and SOC partners like Qualcomm to optimize and take advantage of hardware capabilities to support Ultra HDR experiences in stunning visual quality. We want to ensure Ultra HDR is widely adopted so users can enjoy their photos in HDR quality across their devices. In Android, we expect Ultra HDR to be adopted as a default format in camera apps and through APIs for in-app cameras on premium devices running Android 14. The platform will natively support rendering of images in HDR on supported devices. We are also working with Chrome and key industry players to make Ultra HDR available on other form factors. We are also excited to announce Google Photos support for Ultra HDR. Ultra HDR was developed in close partnership with Photos to ensure it met the high quality standards of Google Photos. Photos users will be able to view, edit, share with family and friends, and reminisce on their memories in Ultra HDR quality. We believe Photos support for Ultra HDR will encourage industry adoption and improve the quality of photos that users consume and share every day. To learn more about capturing images in HDR, watch the How to Build High Quality Camera Experiences session. Unlike HDR video, migration to surface view is not a requirement, and HDR images can be rendered directly in image view alongside SDR assets. Apps can opt in to render images in HDR with a simple one-line change to the manifest file, or by setting the color mode in the activities on create method. You can also use standard Android APIs like the bitmap class with Ultra HDR images. We encourage developers to use these APIs to add HDR image support to your app. All these premium platform capabilities are exciting but developers are often challenged by how difficult it is to build the media experiences that will delight their users. We understand the importance of having great developer APIs to mitigate this complexity, and I am excited to share the latest updates on our Jetpack Media 3 support library. First, let me acknowledge some of the major trends we've been seeing in media usage. Watching long-form video content in full screen remains one of the most popular use cases on mobile but user experiences with short-form video content have become hugely popular these past few years and have spread to all types of applications, from social media apps to news apps to apps that previously only delivered long-form content, 
we see user experiences that include an unlimited feed of bite-sized videos. Furthermore, short-form content is now created not only by professionals, but also by any user directly from their mobile device. Apps strive to give users a full suite of tools to capture photos and videos, edit them with effects and audio tracks, and then share them to other users, often over weak or unreliable cellular networks. Building such media experiences with quality has become increasingly complex, especially as newer capabilities, such as HDR, are introduced. But they are needed to meet growing user expectations. To address this complexity, we have been working on Jetpack Media 3, a support library that is now the home for all our high-level media APIs. We introduced Media 3 in Alpha at the Android Developer Summit in 2021, and after a few beta releases, we launched it as Stable 1.0 earlier this year. Media 3 APIs are designed to be simple yet highly customizable, reliable, performant, and optimized for each device capabilities. This abstract away much of the complexity that comes with device and OS fragmentation. Media 3 includes ExoPlayer, or best-in-class player, which is not directly integrated with Media Session, making it much easier to expose playback controls to other surfaces, such as Android TV or connected Wear OS devices. All new ExoPlayer enhancements will be part of Media 3 moving forward, including optimization for short-form content and support for use cases beyond playback, such as transcoding and video editing. Now that ExoPlayer is part of Media 3, we strongly recommend all developers that currently use ExoPlayer to switch over to Media 3. Migration is easy. For developers that are already running the latest version of ExoPlayer, it is just a matter of changing the package names. And we even provide a script to automatically take care of that. Apart from the package name, the implementation is strictly identical. One benefit of Media 3 is that it includes a stable API surface to provide you with a strong guarantee of APIs that won't change in subsequent releases and make future upgrades even smoother. We are currently in a transition period during which we release ExoPlayer both as part of Media 3 and through the standalone ExoPlayer GitHub. But we plan to stop doing this later this year, so please switch over to Media 3 to take full advantage of new and upcoming features. As mentioned earlier, Media 3 covers use cases beyond playback. This includes the Transformer APIs, which is a solution for media transcoding and editing. These operations are normally complex to implement, especially with great performance and quality. Yet, they are critical for building an app experience with user-generated content. Transformer currently supports transcoding from one media format to another using optimal parameters for the local device, Handling of special formats, such as slow motion videos and HDR videos with support for tone mapping from HDR to SDR. Single asset video editing with an FX framework. And we're also working on adding support for previewing effects in ExoPlayer so that Media 3 can then be used as an end-to-end -end video editing toolkit. Transformer APIs follow patterns similar to ExoPlayer. They are very simple to use for built-in functionalities. And yet, they can also support advanced behaviors by letting developers inject customized modules instead of using defaults. Let's take a look at a few examples. First up, a simple transcoding example. Begin by building a transformation request with a MIME type of the desired video output. In this example, we just want to transcode a video clip to the H.264 video format. Then build a transformer, passing in the request and a listener. The listener has callbacks where you can track progress and handle possible error cases. Finally, start the transformation, which happens in the background thread. In this second example, we want to tone map an HDR video to SDR. We just need to change the transformation request accordingly, and everything else is the same. Here's an example of video editing. Transformer includes many built-in transformations, so in this example, we just changed the transformation request to be a 180 degree rotation and also a horizontal flip of the video. Lastly, here's an example of a custom effect where we'll use a transformation matrix to zoom into the video over time. Start by subclassing matrix transformation. Inside, we'll instantiate a matrix and then map the provided presentation time onto a scale matrix. This video effect can then be passed to the transformer, 
similar to this transformation request in the previous examples. For even more advanced use cases, you can also plug in a GL texture processor into Transformer as a custom effect and use custom OpenGL code. Please check out the Transformer demo app on the Media3 GitHub for more examples and to try Transformer out for yourself. We are actively working on building more capabilities into Transformer, including multi-asset editing, so please stay tuned for more updates. All right, so let's recap. Media is a critical area on mobile, and user expectations grow every year, not only to consume, but also to create and share their own content. We are investing in both bringing premium media capabilities to Android and helping you take advantage of them with simple Jetpack solutions. So we can't wait to see the delightful media experiences you're going to build. Thank you for your time. Thank you.